Good afternoon. I'm Brooks Keel, the president of Augusta University, and I appreciate you taking time on a beautiful Friday afternoon to spend some time with us uh, as we try to address some of the many questions I know you have regarding uh, President Biden's uh, directive um, uh, dealing with vaccination and federal contracts. So I'm hoping to carry on from the town hall meeting we had this past Friday in which we addressed a number of questions there uh, and we'll spend some time today dealing with some of the new questions that, that have come across the last week or so. As everyone knows, President Biden has uh, issued an executive order uh, requiring uh, COVID-19 vaccination for all federal employees. Uh, also has required it for uh, individuals that have federal contracts, for organizations that have federal contracts, and for the employees associated with that. And more recently, uh, has also required it for health systems uh, that receive Medicare Medicaid funding, uh, which is the vast majority of health systems uh, in our area, including our own. Uh, the, 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 order, the, the president's order requires federal contractors, including those within the University System of Georgia, to provide written confirmation that they are, in fact, fully vaccinated against COVID-19 uh, no later than January 4th, 2022, uh, and to comply with CDC guidance on masking and social distancing. Uh, and I'll say at the outset here, as I've said many times before, we probably have more questions than answers still. Uh, and we're going to continue to try to address those questions and provide you with answers on a real-time basis as, as much as we possibly can. So although I won't get to every single question you have, I hope to cover uh, many of them today. Uh, and I'll be referring you to our Frequently Asked Questions uh, site where you can go and, and reference uh, the other questions that may come up. Let me remind you once again <clears throat> that this, it is a president uh, directive, but it is president Biden's executive order and not President Keel's executive order. And I say that just to let you know, this is not something that is unique for our university or for our health system. Quite the opposite, it impacts virtually every university in the country, certainly every university that has a federal contract. There are some that, that don't, but it, it applies to every entity that has a federal contract and most, if not all, the health systems in this country as well. So it is a widespread directive. It is not specific to AU, uh, and it's certainly not uh, specific uh, uh, to me. It is President Biden's executive order. Now, we're going to do our very best to keep you informed. <clears throat> We've always tried to do that. As I've said also many, many times, I have been so incredibly proud of how this institution has come together throughout this entire pandemic and how nimble you have been and, and how adjustable to change you have been uh, and how what, what incredible attitude you have all had. We are tired of COVID. I am tired of it. I know you are too. Uh, and I know our health, health system folks are especially our frontline providers and I'd be remiss if I didn't take this time to say thank you to each and every one of you who are on the, on the front lines of this pandemic. We're still in a fight. We know that and we are so very grateful uh, that you are fighting the good fight for us. First, uh, the question we have is what are the forms of, in order to file for an exemption? Now we're going to be considering exemptions, but there are just that. They are exemptions to the policy. There's a very limited scope as to what those exemptions might be. Uh, you, uh, forms are going to be available uh, via the Qualtrics portal. If you haven't heard about the Qualtrics portal, you most certainly will be because that's where we're going to be doing a lot of the, uh, information exchange and a lot of information provision will be through that portal. Uh, and information on how to apply is going to be shared very soon for both university and health system employees. Please look at your emails. And if you see an email from, from this administration on the university side or the administration of the health system, please open it. Please pay attention to what you see. We're going to be using email as a primary point of contact to let you know where we are with this. If an exemption is not approved, will the deadline of January 4th be extended? The deadline is not established by us. The January 4th deadline to, be, to, to become vaccinated is established by the federal government, and as such, we are not going to be able to modify it. And we are strongly encouraging covered employees to, to, get, to get ready, get prepared to meet the requirements. We value our employees and want to assist you in every way we can, but we all have to comply with this federal guidance, and we ask you to please plan and start, uh, start preparing for vaccinations now. What does the terms religious exemptions must be based on a sincerely held religion or religious belief and 
prior vaccinations for other purposes may be considered. What, what do those terms mean? And again, go to our website. We're currently working on an electronic tool which employees will be able to utilize to provide their vaccination status and or to help them apply for an exemption. There are a, a sincerely held religious belief exemptions. There are medical exemptions, uh, but you have to apply for those. Uh, and We will be evaluating those just as quickly as we can, and you should be hearing more information on, on how to apply for one of those exemptions. Please bear with us as we get this set up. We're going to review each individual, each request individually, uh, and again, you should be receiving uh, information very soon on this. Uh, what we got asked a, a very good question. We, uh, one person said, "I'm employed by the state of Georgia. Why do we have to follow guidelines for working on uh, working with federal employees?" Our university is working diligently to evaluate individuals, and we're evaluate, evaluating our employees on an individual basis, based on a couple of things. Number one, do you work directly with the federal contract? Number two, are you exposed to those who work on a federal contract? And number three, are you working in a space, a building, an environment in which a federal contract occurs? If you meet any one of those three, uh, then you'll, you'll fall into this requirement for vaccination. Even if you personally do not work on a federal contract or don't come into contract contact with those that do, you may still share a common space with someone who does, and that falls, that means you fall within the requirement to become vaccinated. Uh, and again, this is not our uh, uh, basis. We're basing this on the actual federal directive. So even though you're not per you may not personally work on a contract, you could still be impacted by this directive. What if I've had COVID-19 previously and have natural immunity? We know that uh, individuals who, ha who have had COVID-19 and fortunately have recovered, uh, you, you build natural immunity. Uh, and we get uh, asked quite a bit, what if I've already had COVID and I've got antibodies, do I still need to get vaccinated? This particular executive order requires vaccination regardless of whether a person has had the virus or not. So even though you may, be, you may have antibodies and you may have had antibody tests to prove that you have antibodies, you still must get vaccinated according to this directive. What about my privacy rights under HIPAA? The Qualtric system is designed to safely and securely collect the private information and is HIPAA compliant. We, we're going to ask you to upload your information, your proof of vaccination through this Qualtrics system, and that is going to be a very protected system. No employee has the right to ask another employee about their vaccination status. The information we're going to be collecting is personal and it is private but we're able to evaluate the more than 5,000 individuals on this campus that are affected through this secure system uh, and we'll do it in such a way to also protect your privacy. How many employees are impacted? Uh, I mentioned to you before this is a changing number uh, and, and it has been increasing as we thoroughly evaluate every single employee that works at AU. Currently, 92% of our university employees are subject to this guidance, uh, the, the federal uh, executive order guidance related to federal contracts. 92% of those individuals who work on the university. We also know now that 100% of health system employees are subject to the guidance of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services and OSHA. There are several different aspects about this requirement. One is a federal contract uh, requirement. One is if you're in a health system and gets reimbursed for Medicare or Medicaid, that's CMS, and the other is if you're an entity covered by OSHA and have over 100 individuals in the workplace, regardless of where you fall, uh, th this dictates to us who, has to, uh, who, ha who is required to be vaccinated. 92% of the university and 100% of health system employees currently are. Another question we get asked a good bit, will students be required to take the vaccine? Well, one person commented, they have as much or more chance of encountering a federal contract employee as a staff member or a faculty. And while that may make sense, that's not the requirement. The requirement only addresses employees and student workers. It does not address students in general. If you are a student worker and you are subject to this, uh, you're in, in a right with a federal contract or in, in a place where federal contracts are, are taking place, then yes, you'll be covered, but not students in general. So we're not going to be requiring all students in the classroom to be vaccinated, even if the particular faculty member happened to be or happened to have a federal contract. Only student workers. 
Will the new lawsuits affect the vaccine requirement? I'm sure you probably have seen the news. There are several lawsuits that have been filed or seeking an injunction on the requirement. Uh, currently, the federal order stands, and we must take appropriate steps towards compliance. As it is of today, the courts have not issued any ruling that affects the deadline. We are, are actively watching uh, the uh, our reports. We are actively engaged with our system office. They are actively engaged uh, with the governor's office uh, and with the uh, attorney general's office to make sure that whatever uh, injunction may or may not take place, well, we'll let you know as soon as possible. But as it stands up today, uh, the, the, in, the lawsuits do not preclude uh, some uh, uh, um, carrying out this requirement. What if I can't get an appointment for vaccination at AU Health? We're working feverishly to add vaccine clinics at AU Health as doses become available. Now, COVID-19 vaccination appointments can also be made at your local pharmacy or at your local physician's office and should be covered by insurance. We, we have done a marvelous job, as, as you know, uh, of providing vaccinations throughout this pandemic since they've been available uh, this past December, almost a year now. Uh, and we have great uh, staff that's, that's making that available. We're going to do everything we can to make it as convenient for you as we can uh, to, uh, to uphold this requirement. What are the ramifications if a person chooses to not take the vaccine? Uh, will, will people be fired for not complying? We are strongly encouraging all covered employees to prepare to meet the requirements as soon as possible. If you know you are one of those individuals, please go ahead and arrange to get vaccinated and do so as soon as possible. We obviously value all of our employees and we want to assist you in every way we can. But naturally, this organization must comply with the federal guidance. This is not an option for us. Employees who meet the requirements and do not receive an exemption will need to comply. If you have an exemption, that's fine. But if you do not, and the exemptions are going to be limited, then you must comply with this requirement. If you do not, uh, the options that are available are we'll start with counseling, but that will be followed by progressive disciplinary action, which is consistent with our existing workplace rules. For those that are impacted, this is not an option. You have to comply with the mandate. Can I take leave in order to get vaccinated? I mentioned at the last town hall, I wanted to just reiterate, Human Resources announced uh, on August 27th of this year that employees may utilize up to eight hours of administrative leave in order to, to, take, to get vaccinated. Leave can be taken in less than a full day or increments of not less than one hour for a total of eight hours. Uh, but it has to be taken by December 31st, 2021, or it will be lost. It will not roll over. If you need leave for this, please contact HR. If you receive the vaccine uh, and have a reaction to that vaccine, as rare as it may be, and it is very rare, please contact HR, and they'll assist you with any leave you, you may need to take. If we're not involved with the direct patient care at our AU health system, are we still under the same requirement? And that the answer is yes. I want to reiterate this. Even though you may not come into direct patient care or contact at the health system, if you're employed by the health system, 100% of health system employees are subject to the guidance of CMS and OSHA. That's very new. That, that is a guidance that came out first part of this week since the last town hall I gave just a week ago. And as I mentioned at that time, we knew there may be changes. Uh, they have in fact been implemented and now 100% of health system employees are also subject to this guidance. When is the deadline for all employees of AU Health to be vaccinated? The requirement is on the health system side, just like it is on the university side, that all employees will need to be fully vaccinated by January 4th, 2022. That's next January. However, for the, to meet the CMS guidance, all health system employees must begin their vaccination protocol by December 6th, 2021. And as you know, depending on the vaccine, it could be uh, short as one week, two weeks, or four weeks uh, before a person uh, receives all of the vaccines uh, based off the, 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 the vaccination that you receive. Uh, Johnson Johnson is a single dose so that you will be vaccinated uh, at that point in time. Uh, Pfizer is a three week and then a second dose is needed. Number Moderna is four weeks and a second dose is needed. Is needed. You have to have either the first dose of J&J &J or that second dose by January 4th. And for health system employees, you have to begin your vaccination protocol by, by December 6th. If you have any questions at all, please, again, call AU Health, uh, uh, Employee Health, and they'll be happy to provide you with guidance. 
How do universities upload proof of vaccination or file for an exemption? We have set up a, a, a portal, a JAG Safe Vax portal. Uh, it's designed to guide you through the process of documentation uh, and is also where you go to request forms for exemptions. All covered employees are required to provide their vaccination status in a HIPAA compliant and secure JAG Safe Vax portal. This portal can be found at JAG Safe Vax, that's J A G S A F E V A X dot Qualtrics dot com. Please go to that website that will give you the information you need to upload the documentation, that's to be written documentation that you have been vaccinated. And we're going to be sending individual instructions that will be sent to impact employees over the next day or so. So, again, please check your email. The instructions will be specific to you. It will tell you where to go to upload this information. It will tell you how to upload this information. And it will also provide you with forms and, and requirements that we need if you wish to apply for an exemption. What about health system employees? How do you upload proof of vaccination or file for an exemption? If the employee did not receive their vaccine at AU Health, you must submit proof of vaccination to employee health at augusta.edu. To complete an accommodation or exemption request, please also refer to the forms, which are going to be provided again in email to those employees, and you can email the completed form to auhsvaccination at augusta.edu. I mentioned before, we, we, have a, we have always tried to do our very best at providing you with the latest information on an ongoing basis. Your best source of information is to go to the www.augusta.edu slash COVID resources website and also slash executive order in order to find out more information regarding vaccination or requirements for federal contractors. There are frequently asked questions on this site, there are instructions, there are links to other sites that you may need, and it's a great way to stay attuned to what's going on. So please check your email, especially over the next week, for more information. If you need more information, contact HR, contact employee health, or go to the JAG site here, uh, augusta, uh, www.augusta.edu slash COVID resources for more information. I'll be remiss if I didn't thank once again uh, the uh, transition team uh, ably co-chaired by Drs. Russell Keene and Neil McKinnon uh, and, a, and, a, and a large number of individuals across the entire enterprise who have worked tirelessly to try to help us uh, get policies and procedures out to address this directive, get information out, and make it as easy as we possibly can for you. This pandemic has not been easy, and we're not out of the woods yet. But as, as I have said many, many times, this university is different. This health system is different. This enterprise is different because we are truly a family. We've worked together through the last nearly 20 something months in this pandemic. And I know we'll get through this particular uh, challenge together as well. Please let's keep in mind what our values are. Please look after each other, support each other. Uh, and I can't thank you enough for all that you do. So please stay tuned for more information. Please call if you, if you need help, call HR, call Employee Health if you need help. Check the Jaguar site for, for more information. Uh, and again, together we will we'll get through this. So thank you very much and go Jags.